All right, <clears throat> so it's a Jeep World fans. This is a pinion install kit. There's the number. Apparently, it works on a Liber too. Pretty sure that means Liberty, but that's kind of weird. Anyway, cost me around 80 bucks at Auto Zone, which I rarely partake in Auto Zone parts, but <clears throat> screw it. It also does not come with Timken bearings. It comes with Koyo bearings, which I found out are made in Cairo, Georgia, a couple hours from me. So anyway, that's the next episode. Pinion bearing install replacement on the front of 2009 JKU. <clears throat> this one. Down there. So, more to follow. Alright. <clears throat> so, we've gotten done so far is taking the wheels off, taking the brakes off. Alright. The brakes are these two bolts right here. 21 millimeter. Just take the whole assembly off. Support it as I've done. <clears throat> Get it out of the way. Take your rotor off, which is laying down there on the floor. And then you've got three 13 millimeter 12 point bolts that hold the hub on here. So once you remove those bolts, then you can just slide the hub out. You don't need to take the wheel speed sensor off because it's obviously long enough and you just need to pop the axle out about that far is, is the way it's sitting so that it will disengage from the carrier so that you can take the carrier out. So I've done this on both sides. <clears throat> As you can see by the silver here right that is anti-seize which I put on the hub so that when I do this frequently because of breaking stuff doing whatever I need to do they'll just come out easily without having to use a hammer and a pry bar so I've also loosened the pinion nut and that's a one and an eighth or 29 millimeter so my suggestion is if you don't have air then what you need to do is you need to take your drive shaft off and you need to loosen that nut prior to lifting the vehicle so that the wheels and everything is still on the ground and the pinion won't turn if you got air, it doesn't matter. I did it in the current position because I've got air. And it'll just spin it off. I can just hold the yoke and not have to worry about it. But if you don't have air and you're just using sockets and wrenches and pry bars and all that good old fashioned stuff, leave the tires on the ground so you've got, you don't have to fight with the nut. I also have a tool that I've made that will bolt into two of those holes and hold the yoke to when we get to the next step, which is after I pull the carrier, after I pop the pinion out, then I got to replace the pinion bearings, which that's this whole freaking escapade anyway. That'll be in another video. But when you're putting the yoke and the pinion back together what we've got right here is your crush sleeve well it takes like 400 to 450 foot pounds of torque 
to crush that sleeve to set your preload on your bearings. So I built this, and what this is is just a big long bar, right? Two holes in it, bolt it to the yoke, swing it down, and it secures it secures the yoke in place so that I can put a breaker bar on that one and a socket with a big pipe and then crank down the pinion nut the new pinion nut so that it it starts to crush the sleeve once it starts to crush the sleeve that's when you want to start measuring your preload which if I'm not mistaken I need to look it up real quick but it'll be around 13 to 15 inch pounds on the pinion nut so you don't want to crush it too much because if you crush it too much and you have too much preload guess what you get to start all over again so we don't want to do that so anyway that's just a quick synopsis of what I've done to, to this point so the next step is going to be take the carrier out take the pinion out and then start removing the bearings. All right, so we've got to take the carrier out. But what you want to do first, if this is your first time you've ever had your carrier out, you want to make sure that the bolts and the carrier caps remain as they are when you take them out. Which means, if you, if you can see this, this carrier has been tagged right here. It's got an upside down V right here on the the cap. On the carrier housing, it has another upside down V. So I know that this cap goes on this side in this orientation. So we got a 16 millimeter to take the, the bolts off. They're torqued. When I put everything back together, I'll get you the torque specifications. So, let's get this out of here. and they're finger tight. The other thing you need to do is when you're pulling these caps out, you're going to have shims You're going to have shims, like the ones that are right here. You need to make sure that these shims stay on the same side, in the same orientation, so that you don't have to do any kind of remeasuring to get your proper pinion depth and how your gears mesh together. Well, 
I'll do is I'll keep the bearings next to the jack stands on the side that they belong and you can pull the shim pack out put that with the bearing cap so you don't get it confused pull this shim pack out put that with the bearing pack so that you know which side that they go back in you do not want to get them mixed up and then when you pull it out make sure that you keep a hold of the race as well because it'll fall off just like that one just did and it is heavy so be prepared for that here we go so there there's your carrier removed shim packs on the correct sides and there's that step finished okay so what I was saying about the shim packs and the bearing caps was this take the bearing caps off it shim packs out <clears throat> this side over here I just put down here so that I know that that's the side. And the other side is over there. Shim pack with the cap. That way you don't get them confused. So next, we're gonna be pulling out the pinion. What you're seeing right there is the pinion gear and the inner drive bearing. So that's the next step. And all you really have to do is Go on the other side, finish taking the pinion nut off, and take the yoke off, reach around, give it give your axle a reach around, tap the yoke, tap the pinion so that it pops out, and then we can get on to the interesting and more entertaining part of removing the bearing and installing a new bearing so more fun to follow so real quick my i have a tom woods drive shaft in the front so it's set up a little bit differently than stock so i've got this four bolt yoke that bolts in up there so i only took the this end off and then I bungeed it up out of my way, which is perfectly acceptable because, I mean, I'm not doing anything else. And like I said, I already broke the nut loose, so it's already loose. And they're really one-time good deal. You don't want to reuse a pinion nut because... You know it's a lock nut so we'll put that over here this should just as it does slide right off not an issue sit that over here so there's that and then what we have is we have this pinion seal that we've got to destroy so that's fun because you know they're a pain in the ass to put in they leak often and then you get a good one that's not leaking like this and guess what let's destroy it taking it off because there's really no other way to do it you can't just ease it off it's it's a press fit in so anyway that's the next step so they do sell seal removers but last time I did this I broke it Oh, I'm going to get it off. Here we 
you have it. One destroyed seal. A bunch of fluid. A bunch of gear oil. So now you got some shims, and washers, and oil slingers, and whatever have you. So your oil slinger and your bearing. Next step, like I said, if you can, reach around. Get shit out of the way. There's your crush sleeve, other side of the pin, other side of the bearing. You have to remove these races too. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a punch, brass punch. You're gonna come in from this side, from the other side, punch this out to replace the the race. You're gonna punch that race out that way so you can replace the races. You don't want to use old. You don't want to use new bearings with old races. It just doesn't make any sense. So don't do it. All right. Okay, so we're gonna punch some freaking bearing races out using a punch and a hammer. So watch your ears. There's one and an oil slinger. Longer one works. All right, folks. So that's your bearing races. Shabwinged out. That's that. We get in here with a cloth and clean everything up. Should be good to go. No damage, no runs, no drips, no errors, kind of dealio. All good. Okay, a little bit of explanation. So we've got the carrier out, we've got the pinion out, we've got the races out. Here's the races back here. We've got everything taken apart. So when it was inside the uh, carrier, what I was pounding on was the nut, obviously, on the end of here. Why I was pounding was because this bearing here sits down onto this bearing surface right here it's not the only thing that presses it in is the the nut when it when it all goes together and you're trying to compress the uh, crush sleeve so it's not pressed on like this bearing is down here this bearing is down here it has to be pressed on I'll press that on with my with my press, 10,000 pound press. 
this bearing is just pressed on lightly. It's not more or less permanently pressed on. Not permanently, but more heavy duty anyway. So that's why we were pounding on it because we had to pound this pinion off of the bearing and the race was catching the bearing and holding it from going all the way through. So that's the curt explanation. Figure it out or don't. Doesn't matter to me. That's what I had to do. The bearing sits on here. We had to pound it off to get it out of the axle. Deal with it. All right. So we got the pinion off with the pinion bearing. Okay. What we got over here is your standard bearing separator and puller set. So I'm going to break this out. hook this up so what we what we've got actually is right here you can see these grooves right here this grooved area on the end of the gear is created so that you can get a puller to to get to this solid piece of the bearing right just remember that underneath this bearing, in between the bearing and the gear, are your shims that set pinion depth. So you have to make sure when they when you pull these out, put the shims back in all of them, or you'll be in a have a whole nother issue going on. So bear with me while I separate this. All right, so I got the bearing puller on. Just cranking it down a little bit. So it's tight. Tight, cinched, all good. So now I just need some. All right, so. I've got the clamshell on the bearing in between the grooves that I showed you earlier on the gear. Now I'm just adding the appropriate standoff so that I can pull this bearing up and away from the pinion. Because, you know, this is the fourth take because I can't ever get anything right the first damn time. So. Why even try? <clears throat> All this told me in this whole fantastic procedure was the fact that I don't actually have the correct size clamshell. I have the correct size clamshell. I don't have the correct size standoffs for, for, this, for this clamshell, which would work perfectly. But this came as a kit, so we're just going to deal with it. Because, you know, as I learn, you guys learn. So why not we just do it all learning together? Now, if you want to do it the old slow way, then we're going to do it this way. So what you do is you keep cranking on it until it comes off. Pretty simple. Fun stuff. The battle continues.
Guess what? It came off. As planned. In the opinion, a little worse for wear, but whatever. Probably destroyed this whole setup right here, but the pinion bearing is off. Let's hope it needs to be changed. Here's your shims that I'm going to leave in place so I don't have to worry about it. So, there you go. Now I just got to use the press where we started off earlier. Use the, pre the 12 ton press and press the new bearing on. Easy peasy. Okay, well, let's see if this works. I'm using my uh, ball joint uh, kit to uh, press this bearing down so I didn't have to go out and buy any, any additional pieces. Definitely want to make sure it goes down straight. Definitely want to make sure, like I said, it goes down straight. And all the way down. <laughs> so, there we go. New bearing pressed on. All good. Okay, bearing race installation. Uh, bearing races are installed into the housing like this, so that your bearing slides the, the bevel portion of the bearing slides in so the gear and the bearing will slide into here so you need to use a punch and hit on the edge of the race to get it started you know and then once it gets started then you can hit it a little bit harder and harder and drive it all the way until it's flush on this side but what I did was I invested in a uh, bearing race and seal installer so you just find the correct seal or the correct component and ah, you got it that's the wrong one so get the right size you put the uh, handle on it it's pretty simple pretty easy and you just stick it on the stick it on the race put the race firmly where it belongs and Pound it in. Pretty simple. First, um, before you start doing that, you want to get some get some grease, get some axle grease or some lubricant of some sort, and put it around the edge of the race so it'll in, so it'll um, install a little bit easier. And you also want to put grease or oil, gear oil on on your bearing itself so that it's not going in dry. So there you have it. Let's go put some bearing races in. Okay, one more thing I need to let you know is <clears throat> on this Dana 30 on a JK and the JKUs, they're a high pinion. So as you can see, the, the pinion is up here at this level, vice down here where a normal pinion would be on say a CJ7 or an XJ sometimes. Anyway, because of that, it has a baffle, an oil baffle, um, which that's what this is right here, an oil baffle. And it stops the gear oil from draining too quickly out of the top of the pinion because it's at a high angle. So what this little indentation right here, did you see, is how I smacked the shit out of it, destroyed it. So I had to wait to get a new one. As you can see, it's in here installed. It fits in this way, and when I hit um, hit it to remove the race the first time, I damaged it. So I got to know it's a couple dollars from just about anywhere, 
and it took a couple days to get in, so that's why it's taking so long. But anyway, do not forget to put this in. You don't have to put it in, but what it's going to do is it's going to allow less oil to get to your pinion bearings, and that will cause premature wear, so the factory says. Put it back in. If you take it out, put it back in. That's all I can say. So mine's back in. I've greased up the bear, the race surfaces. And now I'm gonna stop talking and start hammering. And you know when it's all the way in because of definite different noise. So, you can see that it's fully seated all the way around. The oil baffle is in there, pinned in, nice and pretty. So there you go. That's the drive bearing race installed. Same procedure. It's the same procedure on the other side. I mean, it's identical, so you won't be doing a video on that. You put one race in, put a hundred races in, it's exactly the same. So, let's go on the other side, count the next race in, be done, get the pinion in, move on. Alrighty, there's the outer bearing race installed. Took like 20 seconds, so that was a worthwhile non-video about as worthwhile as me showing you what I just did <laughs> on to the next step so next what we need to do next is take this bearing which is the outer bearing right put some bearing grease on it right just just lube it up a little bit you don't need to pack it because it's not a greased bearing, it's an oiled bearing. But just put a little bit of oil, grease on it just so that it, it's got some lubrication in the initial stages. So how, what the order is, is this bearing goes in to the race. This oil slinger goes over the top of the end of the bearing. Okay? So Grease up your bearing, oil slinger, which stops the oil from coming out and see weeping through past the pinion seal, right? So you put your bearing in, put your slinger on, and then you install your pinion seal, all right? Prior to installing your pinion seal, it has this sealant around the edge of it I like to take a little bit of black silicon or whatever color silicon or whatever kind of adhesive or whatever and put it around the surface where this is going to go it just gives it a little bit extra stop leak if you will protection so that's what we're gonna do next so in, or in order to install this pinion seal they can be a pain you can take a punch and slide it in between here in between the groove onto the onto the mating surface down here so you don't damage it all right because you don't want to damage any of this area here so if you tap it in lightly back and forth with a small punch you can get it started but again with the seal installer bearing race remover installer that I've got I can take that largest adapter put it right over the top and I get a nice firm surface all the way around and I can install the seal that's the way I'm doing it you find a better way let me know I'll take it under advisement. So, let this get let's get this thing installed. And that's right. 
I'm working in shorts and flip flops. What of it? So, got the bearing in, got the slinger in. Let's see if this is gonna go as smoothly as I told you it would. <laughs> Shockingly, it won't. Guaranteed. Look at that. Like a champ. It never goes that good. Love it. Well, there you go. There's your bearing. Pre-greased. Oil slinger. The one on the other side is called a baffle. And your pinion seal. Installed. Next, the hard part. More to follow. So, the next step is taking the pinion and sliding it in, sliding this through the bearing, the outer bearing, and the oil slinger. Out the end there, there's the oil slinger sitting inside there. So the pinion has to go through that hole, come out, then the yoke has to go on to the pinion, pushing down that outer bearing onto this race surface right here, enough to start the pinion nut a few threads so that you can then torque it down as far as it needs to go until you get 12 to 15 inch pounds of tension when you turn it a full turn. And what gives it the tension is this crush sleeve. So that's the next step. Not hard, but not easy because, you know, it's just me. Plus, here's a top tip. Make sure that when you put your crush sleeve in, it is not like that. Because you will never proceed. You will strip these out. If you're able to even get the, the yoke on the splines enough to start the nut, you'll never succeed. So make sure that the crush sleeve is all the way down touching the bottom bearing because what's going to crush this sleeve is the outer bearing inner race, inner portion of the bearing against the drive bearing right here. This will be crushed in between the two bearings. So there you have it. That's the next step. Should be fun. The video will be fun anyway. Funny. So as you can see, the pin is sticking out the end of the differential as it's supposed to. So what I did since it's just me is <laughs> I got creative. I got a piece of four by four, put it against the pinion gear so it wouldn't damage it because it's wood and then I strapped it to my truss so that it holds it in place because I'm going to have to tap the yoke to get it to get the bearing onto the pinion surface where it's supposed to ride and I've got to tap the yoke to slide the bearing on so that I can get the yoke far enough on to get the pinion nut on. So, again, you gotta do what you gotta do. It shouldn't be that difficult using this method here. So, we'll see what happens. So, here we go. Let's see what we can, it's trouble we can get into with this, this setup. 
don't want to damage the seal you don't want to damage anything all right as you can see it's going on I can get the nut on now and look at that only smacked myself once. All right. So, there we have it. Pinion's in, yoke is on, pinion nut is on. Now I just need to attach my device that I've created that will bolt right into here, which is gonna hold this yoke so I can crank this down. It takes what I said before, I was wrong in the beginning, like 400 and some pounds, but it should take like 200, 250 pounds of pressure to crush that crush sleeve and then be able to spin this and as we turn this nut there should be 12 to 15 inch pounds of pressure that's what we're shooting for so on to that step okay so I saved you the trouble of and the pain of me attaching my yoke securing device what the hell ever you want to call it um, it's pretty much this uh, quarter inch, five sixteenths inch, it's pretty freaking thick steel. Uh, two holes drilled in it so it will uh, attach here and I can still get to the nut. You can buy something like this for, I don't know, 45 bucks. I think some, I saw some site and you get, but anyway. But I built this easy, two holes, drill it, put it on, and then it's literally just cranking down the nut until it seats. So it's still it's still wobbly. See, it's it's wobbly. So once once I get rid of that wobble, then I'll worry about the torque and the backlash or the preload. Okay, so I've cranked it down until I can barely move it now, move the nut, and most of the play is gone. So now I'm at the point where the outer bearing right here is starting to, it's come in contact with the crush sleeve. So now, as I turn the nut, the yoke is pushing against the crush sleeve, against the bearing, which is pushing against the crush sleeve, which is pushing against the other bearing. So, and then the, the crush sleeve will be crushed in between the two bearings, and I'll set the pinion preload like I said before 12 to 15 inch pounds so that's where we're at so now we're on to pressure <laughs> and a lot of it so we got a breaker bar to begin with but let's see how it goes
still loose, but getting tighter. So when you put too much torque on your old breaker bar, this is what happens. Oops, I guess I need a new breaker bar. The saga continues. Okay. So we cranked and we cranked and we cranked and we cranked some more. So now we gotta, I cranked and I pulled this off and I cranked and I pulled this off and because once you get close, you can't go over or you shouldn't go over that 12 to 15 inch pounds, you know, on new bearings. Because if you, you too much pressure and you're going to prematurely wear them out, you don't want that. You don't want not enough pressure because they're also going to wear out, but it's going to be loose. So, either way, you want to be within the required specifications. There's specifications for a reason. So, you know, it's got some tension on it. Let's see what it equates up to on inch pounds. Probably. That looks like. We're at about 16. And it's got some. And that's a. Uh, 14, 16, hits a spot where it's 18, comes back this way and hits a spot where it's 14, 16, and it looks, it looks to be about right around 16, so it's an inch pound over, you know what? I'm good with that. You can't take it back off. You can't you can't loosen it. It doesn't work that way because you crush the sleeve. If you loosen it now, it, you can't it, it will be loose. You'll have play. So that's why when you get it close, you just move it a little bit. You take everything apart, you measure. You move it a little bit, you take everything apart, you measure. You move it a little bit, you take everything apart, you measure. I I had 6 inch pounds. I moved it maybe this far. I moved the nut maybe a 32nd. Maybe, you know, nothing. It seemed like nothing. And I increased it almost 10 inch pounds. So, so by moving it just a little bit at a time, you can do an inch pound, two inch pounds, four inch pounds, but I moved it like this far, like, you know, I don't know how much that is, but I, I moved it, I didn't think very much. And it increased it almost eight to ten inch pounds. So, and I was at six, so that gives me almost 14 to 16 inch pounds, which puts me right at the upper level. Good enough for me. I don't have any, I don't have any play. It's solid. So, all good. So, here we are at the final basically reassembly we have set the pinion new bearing preload to right around 15 give or take an inch pound or two um, after some re more research there's a couple of different places out there like Yukon which is where where I got most of my information from when I installed the, the ring and pinion to begin with says 12 to 15 inch pounds on the rotating torque of the pinion on a new bearing and there's a couple of other places that have different and varying specifications the actual Jeep factory manual says that it should be between 15 and 30 inch pounds well, that just seems like a lot to me, so 
I'll post all the information that I have um, under the video in the in the description, and you guys can do with it as you like. Me, I'm sticking with the 12 to 15 inch pounds on new bearings. I'm not gonna go to 15 to 30. That just seems like a lot, even though the manufacturer may think it's appropriate. So now it's just clean up the uh, surface prior to putting the carrier back in with the ring and locker just so I don't get any garbage inside of it and then it's reinstallation torque everything down and carry on so there you have it I will uh, post all the information torque specs um, size of bolts you know all that stuff it'll be all in the in the comment area so that everybody has all the information that they'll need and I'll, I'll put the uh, part number of the kit that I used there's many of them out there but I'll put the one that I used so that's it I mean just put it back together in reverse order as I said before make sure that your bearing caps are facing in the right direction correct orientation make sure the shims for the correct side go to the correct side so I'll be back with the ring and carrier installation torque and all that stuff I'll, I'll add that to this video and then we'll be finished all right we'll be back all right so I've cleaned up the surface here so that we don't have any imperfections when I put the uh, differential cover back on and I'll have a nice clean surface so now the fun part because the carrier's heavy <laughs> and it's kind of awkward and you got a lot going on so I gotta get it in here to begin with on the bearing caps on don't damage any of the bearings so. slide it back into place forget each side the shim pack for each side slide that in there I cleaned up the shim packs as well should clean up everything back in there just like that it should just be that easy I mean we didn't change anything it might be might be a lot of backlash but it's what I had so let's make sure they're fully in there all right so as I said before each one of these caps has a mark. This is a upward pointing V or looks kind of like, like a carrot and that's the, the matching mark is over here. So I'm going to put those back on the right side in the right direction. The bearing cap torque spec is 60 foot pounds all right and then this one we've got a V that's pointing toward the passenger side and a corresponding V 
here points it to the passenger side. So pretty simple on how they go back in. I believe it's a sixteen millimeter. them up. Once you get them snug then you can grab your torque wrench and torque them to 60 as they should be. snug all right grab the torque wrench all of the rest all the remaining is pretty simple it's just putting thing putting it back together I right, 60. Carrier with the ring and the locker reinstalled, caps all facing the correct direction, and the bearing caps torqued to 60 foot pounds. There you have it. It's seriously just putting everything back together. That's the hardest, that's the, the last hardest thing because only because it's awkward. I'm going to go back to the other side and I'm going to remeasure the pinion preload because there was a question on one of the one of the sites that was the pinion preload supposed to be between 20 and 30 and then someone suggested hey well maybe it's with the carrier installed so with the carrier installed it doesn't matter it's the same so with the carrier installed, it's still right around 16. So the carrier being installed has nothing to do with it. So Morris 4x4 is just incorrect that they're 20 to 30 inch pounds of pinion preload. I say they're incorrect because you know, that's just because I'm going with 12 to 15, but apparently as I stated a minute ago, the manufacturer says 15 to 30. So I guess they would be correct. So anyway, all that information, just like all the rest of the stuff when I do, it'll be in the, in the write-up. And then everybody can discuss it. So I'm going to put the rest of this in together. You guys have a great day. I'll be doing some more videos later. It's a Jeep World Garage. Out. Okay. So I set up my dial indicator so that I could measure the backlash. So hopefully we can you can see that. But it's about nine. So, it's supposed to be 5 to 8. I am not taking this thing apart for 
that small of a it'd be fine so anyway that's how you measure backlash set up a dial indicator secure it to the uh, this is a magnet you, it's a, you can turn it on and off so you turn it on secure it to the axle housing and then manipulate your different angles until you've got your dial indicator just touching the ring gear and then you manipulate the ring gear to measure your backlash so all good that's it peace out